Welcome everybody. Let's take a look at the market. We'll look at the weekly, the daily and intraday charts. So I am going to look at the weekly uh, here in this video, which I said I would do that occasionally if I thought there were some big changes. Of course, it was a big change. The, um, the futures contract changed from June to September. So that's why I got this gap up. And we're up here at 5550 area. I said, I think last week sometime I could see 55 or 5600 happening pretty easily. Well, here we are. Now, um, if you notice the MACD down here is at 175 almost. And historically, if you look over here, it was 208 when it was right here. And that was one of the highest MACDs on the weekly chart in the history of, of the S&P 500. Well, we're up to 175. Um, we'll see what happens here. I think there's a possibility, just maybe, it may not happen, but it could happen. We might fill this gap. Um, it, it might not, but it might f try to fill this gap here. Okay. You can see back here it didn't. It just kept on marching higher. So it doesn't always fill the gap. And if you look back throughout all this, you don't see gaps. It hardly ever happens. Got a gap here and you got a gap here. Okay. But if you look all the way back over here, this is going all the way back to 2021. You don't see any gap ups. Just consistent flow. So gap ups and futures don't happen too often, but here they did because there was a pretty big disparity between June and September contracts. So the market's seriously overheated, but you know what else is new? This is just kind of one big massive bull and I do mean bull. So the market's overheated, but whatever, the market does what it does. We trade whatever the market gives us and make money on it. I don't really care. The market could go to 50, 50 gazillion. It doesn't bother me. I'm not one of these FOMO people. I just trade whatever the market's there. If the market's pulling back, I'm making money when it's pulling back. If the market is going up, then I'm making money when the market's going up. Right now, I'm actually, um, my eye's been on the Russell 2000 because it's been very consistent. Okay. But then again, so is this. This has been pretty consistent as far as uh, profits. I mean, these profits have been insane, right? Crazy. Really good stuff. But anyway, my, my instincts kind of tell me the market's overheated and um, we'll just see how long this lasts. It could get pretty crazy. This could go a little higher still. Get up into here and get into the high 190s, 200. And um, even when it got here, it took a while to get there, right? If you go back, let's see. Like right now we're at 174. Yeah, so what's this what's this candlestick right here? The green one. Let's stretch this out just a little bit. Talk about this just for a little bit so you get an idea sometimes how long these things can actually go on. Okay. So it's this one. So this candlestick right here, okay, is where we're at right now as far as the, the MACD goes for momentum before it hit this peak right here and then rolled over. So what was that? That was one, two, three, four, five more weeks before it, it finally gave it up. So even though we're really elevated up here, so, so seriously elevated, it took a while. You could see here the SMI was slowly starting to have a divergence, right? It just slowly, it's just people don't realize this, but on the weekly chart, things happen kind of slow. But there was a divergence going here very slowly and the divergence dots were picking it up. See how they were going red and white and yellow. They were starting to pick up the fact that there was a divergence going on here. And it gave it up for three weeks. So, you know, just be aware of this. This could run for another, you know, three, four, five weeks. And again, it could give it up right away. It's hard to tell when we start getting up into these nosebleed sections how long this will last. But just historically speaking, yeah, there's room to go here. Doesn't mean it'll do it, but there, it could do it. You know, the Russell 2000, which I'm not gonna look at it in this video, but for members, make sure you take a look at the, the two hour charts tonight in the tonight's email. Um, the Russell 2000s paint a different story and so is the Dow Jones, the DJI. I haven't looked at the Dow Jones transportation. I probably should look at it there. Usually that's the first thing that tells you there's trouble in the market. 
is the DJT, and maybe I'll look at that today if I get a chance. But the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones, they're, they're telling a different story, man. They're headed in the other direction. I mean, the divergence between the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 and Dow Jones couldn't be any further divergence, man. They are, one's pointing up, the other ones are, other ones are pointing down. It's literally that, that big of a divergence going on. So something tells me, I don't know, man. I just, I smell something in the wind, guys. That's all I'm going to say. Something, something's not right in the market. And there's not a whole, whole lot of, um, you know, if you, uh, one of my members, um, <laughs> excuse me, pointed it out last week that the weighted S and P 500 also shows a big divergence compared to the regular S and P 500, which is just being held up by like a hand, you know, maybe not a handful, but not being held up by just a few big stocks. So that that's not a good sign. That's not a healthy sign for the market. And I think as we get through summer here and head towards autumn, I think there's going to be a huge surprise right around election time, man. <laughs> I think the market's going to be in big trouble as we head into our election season. And, uh, well, whatever, that could favor one candidate over the other. I'll let you figure out which one that's going to be. But I think the market's in for a big surprise. And I think it's going to happen. It's kind of hard to... Uh, get a sense for exactly when. And when I say market, I should be specific. I'm talking about the SP 500 and the NASDAQ. I don't think they're going to hold up. I think they're going to run out of gas. And I'm not sure exactly how it's all going to play out, but it probably eventually is going to run out of gas here. And uh, I don't think we'll get a really huge pullback this summer, but we could get start getting a pullback going into autumn or even into 2025. That's where I think we're going to see a monster pullback in the market. I just don't think the market's going to be is going to be able to sustain this craziness, but we'll see how it goes. Regardless of what the market does, we're going to trade it and make bank, right? If the crazies and the Federal Reserve and the socialist billionaires, if they want to prop all this crap up with phony baloney money and do all that, fine, so be it. I'll I'll go along for the ride, right? I don't like what they're doing, but I'm not going to be stupid and not take advantage of it either. All right, so let's move on to the daily chart. Right, so here we are on the daily chart, and I got something here on July 10th. I think there will be a pullback here. That's why I talked about this gap. You know, historically looking back in recent history, the last two, three years, we don't really see gaps getting filled that much on the S&P 500. They just, you know, to the moon has been the, the theme, right? But this time, yeah, I think the probability is a little bit higher. No guarantee this is going to get filled, but it's a little bit higher. It could get filled. This gap could get filled, especially as we approach the end of June going into the first week of July. There's a possibility this thing could start to roll over. Um, here on the daily, uh, SMI's at 78. The MACD, eh, you know, it isn't particularly super high. You can see back here it gets up to 81 or 90 even. Over here in recent times, it was high as 72. Right now, we're sitting at 60. So I don't really see this as being a... This is this is extremely bullish, right? I mean, look at this. And starts widening out and just like this thing wants to go to the moon. So there's room here, I think, to go higher. Believe it or not, there's room for, on the daily for this to go higher. The MAC... The SMI is a little bit elevated. Let me look again. Yeah, 86. Just kind of looking at some spots here. Over here, got as high as, what was this? Okay, 73 really wasn't that high. So, yeah, the SMI, it's, you know, it's definitely up in that area where it, it could start to think about losing some momentum. Um, the MACD though, looks like there's room to go and yeah, so we'll wait on this thing. Could go 5,600, go above 5,600, get up into here and then maybe start to roll over. We'll see what happens. The big question is whether or not the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are going to follow the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones. I think they will. I think eventually they're going to give it up. 
And I think this pullback here is probably not going to be anything too significant. Could get back to 5,400, could even come down to 5,300. You know, we might, some, somewhere in this area, right? Like you can see the, I mean, you can see it as plain as day. Here's support. There's a little support here, support there. Definitely to some kind of support right in this area. You right? You can eyeball it. It's not hard, guys. It's easy stuff. Here's support, kind of support over here. Another one down here, and then you get this. You probably won't get anywhere near that. But you know, I kind of see um, it at least coming down to like 5,400. Probably what's going to happen. Like that, this little support area, probably pretty confidently, and it might even get down to what is this, fifty three forty, and then below that you would be somewhere right around fifty, you know, approximately fifty two fifty. So these are the three big ones, you know, here, here, and here that it could pull back to, uh, in this little pullback going into July. I don't think we're gonna get some monster, you know, five, six, eight, ten percent, you know, pullback in the market. It's going to be like a, a really small kind of percentage thing, you know, 1%, 2% pullback or something like this, right? And then we'll go out into the summertime. We'll have to see. what What is it? See, if the market does surprise us and we get a deep pullback, like let's say all the way down to 5,200. Let's say it pulls back, you know, nearly, let's say it gets up here 5,600 or plus and pulls all the way back to 5,200. That's a 400 point drop. Dang. Okay. A percentage of the market, that's really not a big percentage of the market since the market's so extremely elevated, right? But still, that would be a little bit different sign if it got down to like 5,200, okay? That means maybe as it goes out over here, it won't have as much as much um, momentum and it might crash and burn. You know, it may not be this cycle right here. It might be another one or two cycles out or something like that going into autumn, okay? But this, how deep this goes... And July over here, this first or second week of July, that'll really help us get a feel for what's this thing going to do going this way. Like you notice this little pullback here was so small. Look at this. So this, you know, that means we're going to go to the moon. Right, this was a little bit deeper. And of course, you have to wait to see. It kind of got up here, ran out of gas, but then it took off. It got above the previous cycle, see? It got above it by a little bit. Well, that's a positive bullish occurrence. They got above this. Not by a lot, but it did. Probably like whatever that was. 50 points or something. 25, 50 points. So when it dipped in here, you know it was a bullish a bullish occurrence. So the same thing will apply here. How deep this comes down into here will help us determine what this next cycle is going to do. If it gets below this, like if it gets below this, this wick right here, which is almost exactly 5,200, that would be a sign of weakness in the market. So if it does like a 400 point drop, because I'm sorry, yeah, 56, a 400 point drop and gets down to there, which I don't think it will, but let's say it did that. Say it dropped below 5,200. Ah, then we'd say, ah, okay. I don't think it's going to drop that far, but if it did, that's informational. It tells us that this next cycle probably won't be as strong and have a hard time getting above this, this all time high. On the other hand, if it just kind of drops down here, maybe gets to 5,400, maybe 5,350, maybe even 5,300, whatever, and then bounces back up, then this probably could reach all-time highs again. Okay? All right, so that's the deal on the daily chart. Let's find out where was the trade of the day. Not that it was that difficult to figure out on a, on a uh, contract change. All right? Let's take a look. All right, so this is the 15 minute chart and we can see the gap up because of, you may not be able to see it very well, but this is September. September futures kicked in. So the market jumped up about, uh, what was it? Uh, 5,500, 5, jumped about 60 points, a little more than 60 points. Okay, from June to September contracts. And then road flatline pretty much most of the night. But check this out guys and gals. What is this at 8.45 this morning? What the heck? Plum, I finally got this color right. Plum candlestick. Okay. Plum candlestick. It's like, I think there's a trade here. <laughs> right? Let's spread this out here. Let's make this bigger. Let's see. Look at this. I think there's a trade here, guys. 
Grr. SMI at the bottom. MACD flatlining. My goodness, this is like the ultimate setup. Okay, the get is plus indicator is saying, please trade me, please. Please don't leave me down there by myself. I want to make a lot of money. Shishing, shishing, shishing. <laughs> right? I mean, think about that. Does that does that get any better? It exactly tells you when to place the trade. I mean, the get is plus indicator for the last two years has been smoking it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it's always been right 100% of the time. No, but it's been right a lot. And if that's all you did is trade the get us plus indicator, man. Wow. Just look at this. The stair step of cash. <laughs> that's, I, should, I should take a picture of this, like put it on my wall. The stair step of cash. All right. I don't know what to say. Why haven't you joined as a member? I have no idea. It's $7.99. You know how much money you would have made today if you just traded one micro contract right here? Just one. Let's let's look at this together. So we'll keep this simple. 5,500 to 55.50. That's 50 points. Okay. 50 points. So I know for one E-mini, 50 points equates to $2,500. Okay. That's if you just traded one E-mini today, you would have made 2,500 bucks. If you traded a micro, just one micro, guys. Now remember, the membership is $7.99. Okay, it's stupid cheap. You would have made today trading this indicator on a micro. 250 bucks. I don't know. You tell me. How many times does 8 go into 250? It's about 30 times. A little more. So just one day would have paid for, you guessed it, 30 months worth of membership. 30 months. And I still got people out there that won't pay the $8 because they're so their fist is so tight on their 8 bucks, they think they're being ripped off. People are I just don't understand people. Okay, go do the math yourself. Don't take my word for it. Just, hey, you know what? Call me a used car salesman. I don't care what you call me. Okay, go do the math. Go to CME website. Do, do the research yourself. People are so lazy. Go to CME website. Look up um, S&P 500 Micro. Okay, S&P 500 Micro. It's going to be called E-Micro maybe, but we call Micro. And go look at the specs. You want to call the specs. Okay. So go to this site, just type in CME into your favorite search engine, and then type in CME space uh, micro, S&P 500 micro, and you're going to find the specs for it there. There'll be a, a tab there called specs. If you take your time and understand the mathematics behind it, it's not that hard. Eventually, you're going to figure out, you know, get your calculator out and get your spreadsheet out. You'll figure out that what I'm saying over here is the truth. I've been doing this so long, I can do it in my head. Okay, but you might need your, your spreadsheet to help you out. That's fine, go do it. Instead of sitting on your lazy butts and hemming and hawing about the $8 for the membership, you could have made 250 bucks today on a micro. How much is a micro? A micro is like uh, about $1,400. Now, no, you don't lose the $1,400. You just, you just, how do I explain this for people who don't trade futures? You just like temporarily, the broker temporarily holds your $1,400. They just like temporarily lock it. I'm going to keep this super simple. They temporarily freeze your $1,400. You can't do anything with it while you hold the position for a micro. The micro is forward slash MES. Okay. So they hold your $1,400. They don't take it from you. Okay, they just hold it. While they're holding the 1400 bucks, you made $250 today. When you close the position, take your 250 profit, they release the 1400 bucks. You get your 1400 back. Okay, I'm oversimplifying. That's basically how it works, though, okay? That's how it works. So if you've got $1,400 or $1,500 or $1,800, you could be trading micros. You could have made $250 today. But oh, no. You're going to hold that $8 in your hand like 
super tight fisted. Okay. I still understand people. If you don't have fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, save it up. Get off your lazy butts, work a job, work two jobs. Especially young people. Work two jobs, whatever it takes, save up fifteen hundred dollars. Then you can start trading futures. Okay? And you can start making big money. Now I know there's people out there already that have way more than fifteen hundred dollars. But they won't pay for the $8 membership a month because they're cheap. They're so damn cheap, they'd rather just sit there and pl and play it like, I don't know, I'm not even going to call it safe. I don't know what you call that. Like lazy? <laughs> it's just amazing. Day after day, I get on here and show people how to make money and they won't, they won't spend the 8 bucks on the membership. You could have made thousands of dollars by now. <laughs> you might have had a few losses along the way. That's another thing that people don't understand. They don't know how to, they don't, they don't, since they don't trade, they never deal with this thing. Emotions. Since they never really do any serious trading, they never have to deal with this. But people who are traders know that at some point you're going to take losses and you have to deal with this thing. And in the beginning, almost without fail, most beginning traders, when they take a loss, they get very emotional and they won't trade sometimes for weeks, months. They're all distraught. They lost $100, $200, $500, whatever it is. They're totally freaking out. And they can't get back on top of the, the, the horse because they don't know how to do it. Okay, the more you trade, the less of an issue this becomes. This starts to become just part of the part of the routine. You notice I didn't say taking losses is part of the routine, but the emotional part, you learn to, you learn to not control it, but you learn how to ride it. You learn how it, to not let it control you. And you learn to put it aside and move on to the next trade because you know that if you're making wise decisions, you know, seven out of 10 trades are gonna be profitable, even if it's six out of 10. You're going to make money. And that's the name of the game. That's how it works. Because you're not going to hit 100%. The only time you're going to hit 100% is you put all your money into a savings account. Which that means, for most people, you'll never make enough money to retire. Because savings accounts going to pay you nothing. It's a great place to hold money temporarily. But I mean just temporarily. All right, so that's it for the daily... Uh, video. That's it for the trade of the day. There was big money made today. There was no reason not to take this trade. This was the most awesome absolute setup. It doesn't get any better. This is as sweet as sweet gets. This is the kind of setups we want. Okay. When you see the SMI down below the line, you get to get us plus indicator and off to the races. That's just easy money. It's stupid money. Okay. If you want to become a member, there is a link in the description below this video. There's also one in the top comment. It'll be pinned to the top of the comment section of the video click on the discord.com link. Just make sure you read those instructions first, okay, that are right there with it. Click on the discord.com link, click on server shop, come over here. There's the 799, guys. I mean, you saw the trade of the day. That's one of the streaming charts you get. You get the five minute, the 15 minute, the one hour streaming charts, they're down here. So just click down here when you join, you get the streaming charts. There's also streaming charts for gold, so you can ask me for that in the member chat. Hey, get us where's the gold streaming charts, All right? And I'll give you that. Okay, every night emails go out. Right now, five different charts are going out every night to the members Monday through Thursday. There's the weekly and the daily S&P 500 chart that's in the email. And then there's three two-hour charts with the ultimate direction indicator on there for the two-hour charts. Really good indicator. I worked on that and got that indicator working really good. It gives you great direction. Okay, I'm using it right now to trade the Russell 2000. Because I'm pretty sure there's a trade coming up in Russell 2000 in about the next probably day or two. There's going to be a short side trade in the Russell. I'm using it. I'm using that indicator. So there's three charts, total of five, but the three two-hour charts, of course, are the SPX, the NDX, and the RUT. That's the S&P 500, 
the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000, the two hour charts with the two hour indicator on there. Really super nice. You want to be on the nightly email. So when you join, put your email address in here and you'll get the nightly email. Okay. Also, I give an opinion, a few sentences of my opinion about what I think the market's going to do, specifically the S&P 500. Okay. Premium symbols. I saw a bunch of symbols going in there today. I have logic that grabs symbols every day and put them in here. I saw that um, in the futures, there was natural gas and let's see, what else? Copper. Natural gas and copper, something going on with them. You might want to check those out for people to trade those products. Okay, there's also optional stocks in there. There's industries in there and there's short, short symbols in there. Okay, really nice. Definitely worth a look. Okay, the other day I just put some fixed income in here. I traded a corporate bond or bought a corporate bond. I put that bond in there so you know which one I'm buying. You don't have to buy the ones I buy, but if you want to see what I bought, you can look in there, okay? Occasionally I do that. I don't do it that often, but occasionally I put a corporate bond in there of something that I buy, because that's what I do. I take my profits from the market, I buy corporate bonds, and I make interest. A lot better than savings accounts or CDs or any of that garbage, okay? And I'm really good at hunting down corporate bonds that pay good, all right? So that's what I do. Bring the money in, turn profits, I parlay the money into corporate bonds and move on to the next trade. Of course, I, if I can, I strip some off the top, pay some bills, do whatever. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about the rules. And here's the refund rules. Make sure you read it. You got to know the rules. Although if you break the rules, well, it's going to be your fault. And then I'm going to get in your face about it. So make sure you read the refund rules. There's a rule in there about I'm not a, a financial advisor. I only give my opinion and everything on this server, no matter who's saying it, is educational purposes only. Same thing with my videos. Okay, you're responsible for your own trades, which is the way it should be so you can become a great trader. Okay, you don't just want to follow me, get us. Okay, you can learn from me and use the service to help you become a better trader, but you don't want to be following like every trade I make. That's why I don't stream my trades. Yeah, I detest that kind of stuff. You don't learn nothing doing that. Okay, so anyway, do your own trades. You're responsible for your own trades. And lastly, there's a rule in there about be respectful on the server. Don't come in here trolling. Be nice. Be respectful. Don't bring your political garbage in here. It, occasionally, it's going to leak into the into the server a little bit. Okay, but you know, just be nice. Be respectful. If you start being a troll, I'm going to confront you. I'm going to delete your junk. Okay. And if you get really bad, I might kick you or ban you. So don't do that. Just come, enjoy the environment, make some bank. All right. That's what we do here. All right. Happy trading, everybody. God bless everybody. Talk to all real soon again next time.